Hi friends, we are here to discuss the revised syllabus of SYBSC Microbiology as laid down by the Savitribai Phule, Pune University, Pune. With me, Prof. Girish Kukreja, Head, Department of Microbiology at New Arts, Commerce and Science College, Ahmednagar. As we have discussed earlier that the course structure comprises of two theory papers and one practical course. In the earlier lecture, we have discussed the medical microbiology and immunology course. Today, we will be talking about the MB212 Bacterial Physiology and Fermentation Technology. So, there are two credits. One, it deals with bacterial physiology and second, it deals with the fermentation technology. To start with, with bacterial physiology, we have the first unit that is the enzyme. Here, we will be introduced to these biocatalysts which are actually catalyzing the entire metabolic reactions taking place inside any cell. We will study the properties of these enzymes, we will know about the nature of their active site, the pocket where actually the reaction it takes place, we will study its structure and the commonly occurring amino acids at these active sites. We will also know about the coenzyme, apoenzymes, prosthetic groups, cofactors which play a major and a key role in enzyme catalysis. We will also have an overview of the ribozymes which are the RNA molecules acting as the enzymes. We'll then go for the classification of these enzymes, that is the nomenclature and classification of the enzymes as per IUB up to the class level. So we'll know the six classes of these enzymes. Then we'll talk about how exactly this catalysis is brought about. We'll be talking about the various models which have been proposed for studying these catalysis. That is the lock and key model, the induced fit model and the transition state model. We'll know about the effect of various external and internal parameters on the working of these enzymes. We'll talk about the effect of pH, temperature, substrate concentration, enzyme concentration, various activators and inhibitors which modulate the activity of these enzymes. With this in background, we'll move towards the metabolism. So we'll be talking about the second unit that is the bacterial physiology. We'll start with the definitions of metabolism, anabolism, catabolism, respiration and fermentation. We will try to understand the basic differences and the proper meaning of these terminologies. We will then enter the world of these metabolic pathways. We will be talking about some common metabolic pathways. Here the emphasis will be on the enzymes which are involved in these pathways and the structures of the various intermediates in the pathway. To start with, we'll have embedded Mayorov and Parnas pathway, commonly called as glycolysis. We'll have the hexose monophosphate pathway. We'll have the ED pathway, that is the enter deodorant pathway. The phosphoketolase pathway, both pentose and hexose. We'll be talking about the TCA, Krebs cycle, citric acid cycle, known by various names. We'll be emphasizing more on the amphibolic nature of this uh, particular cycle and also about the glyoxylate bypass. We'll also talk about gluconeogenesis, right? Synthesis of glucose again and the significance of this particular pathway that is gluconeogenesis. With this, we'll end the first unit, the first credit that is the bacterial physiology which comprises of enzymes and these metabolic pathways. We'll then enter the world of fermentation technology. So it starts with the concept of fermentation technology. We'll know the importance of microorganisms by just having an overview about the various products which are produced by using microbes. First, we'll be talking about microorganisms itself when they are uh, the products of the fermentation that is the microbial biomass based fermentation. We'll know some biofertilizers, biopesticides, probiotics. We'll talk about production of certain primary metabolites that is the organic acids, amino acids, vitamins and enzymes and some secondary metabolites that is like antibiotics. We'll also talk about production of uh, uh, recombinant products from these microbes. Some of the very famous ones include insulin and growth hormones, various fermented foods, yeah, the cheese, the yogurt, uh, microbial biotransformation, uh, different kinds of uh, steroid transformation. We'll just have an overview of examples of various products which are produced. We'll know about the products produced and the microbes which are producing these products, right? Then we'll be talking about the industrially important microorganisms which we refer to as the industrial strains. So we'll talk about what are the characteristics that are required in a typical industrial strain. What are the ways and means to screen them? We'll talk about the primary screening of the microbes, the secondary screening of the microbes. Once they are screened, how they are maintained. We'll talk about the master culture, working seed culture, how the inoculum is developed for a large fermentation process 
and how we are going to preserve and maintain these industrial strain one of the important aspects then we'll be talking about the actual fermenter where the actual fermentation it takes place now there are different types of fermenters we'll generally talk about only a typical CSTR that is the continuous stirred tank reactor we'll talk about its different parts and study their working We'll also have an uh, overview of monitoring the various parameters during the fermentation process. We know that these different parameters, like in the beginning we saw, they affect the enzymes, so therefore the metabolism. So we'll see how are these different parameters like temperature, pH, aeration, agitation, foam, these are monitored during a typical fermentation process. We'll have a look about the different types of fermentation, a typical batch fermentation, a continuous fermentation and a dual fermentation. We'll also know about the various media, right, which are used in industrial fermentations, right. This forms a, a major part in the typical fermentation process, the constraints of different media, like we'll know what are the carbon sources used, what are the nitrogen sources, amino acids, vitamins, minerals water, buffer, antiform agents, the precursors, the inhibitors, the inducers, right? The food uh, for these microorganisms to produce the products which we want. So we'll talk about these uh, media components in a typical industrial fermentation process. Then we'll come to contamination. Like we are worried for a simple, simple contamination which we have in our laboratory. Uh, here we are concerned more because it is on a larger scale and uh, leads to a great economic loss. So we'll have an overview of contamination. We'll know what are the sources, uh, what precautions we can take and what consequences this contamination may lead to in a typical fermentation process, right? So with this, this entire course, it deals with these two aspects. One is bacterial physiology and next is the fermentation technology. Stay tuned with us for more such sessions. Thank you.